Welcome back to the Acorn Path, everyone. And if you are new here, please subscribe and you will get updates on when I put out new content. I have some really exciting stuff that's gonna be coming up. So definitely don't forget to subscribe. So today, without any further ado, <laughs> the video that I have been hinting at here and there on trauma. I am a clinical licensed counselor in the state of Illinois in the United States. I practice in Chicago and I work with people who are on both sides of trauma. So those who have impacted harm towards others and those have, who have been impacted by that harm. And we're going to talk a lot on this channel about different aspects of things. So far, we've really gotten into just skills and being able to notice, creating awareness around different topics. And I feel like it's time for us to break into the trauma wheel of this channel. And it's hard for me to imagine talking about trauma without talking about our bodies and our brains. Today, I'm going to really just lay out some basic groundwork for us to even understand what is trauma? What am I even talking about when I bring that word up? Because I've already said it several times and I'm sure you have some kind of image or sensation or idea in your head about what it is that I'm talking about. So. As usual, I want to create the context so we all know what I am talking about and you're allowed to take that and kind of run with it in your own way and that way we know what we're talking about when at least I'm bringing this up. Let me start. When I do trauma-informed trainings for people, really where I start is definitions of things because we have to know the difference between certain things to really get to what trauma is at its very basic roots. So the first definition that I talk about is stress. So we all say we're stressed out. I even hear kids say they're stressed out. But do we really know what stress is? So stress is when we have tension, emotional, psychological, maybe even physical tension going on because of some kind of adverse circumstance or situation. So that's how I'm, I'm taking that definition that is you know, Webster Dictionary and also a little bit of my experience there with people and how they experience that stress. So stress is something very normal. We're all gonna have it. Uh, it comes, it goes, and we can have chronic stress over something, you know, let's say we work in a very stressful environment. So we could have chronic stress of having to go back into that environment constantly. Uh, that's prolonged or chronic stress. So the next definition that I have people look at is the difference between stress and traumatic stress. So traumatic stress is when we experience an event or a series of events where the stress actually overwhelms our system. So when I'm saying our system, what I'm saying is our nervous system, our brain, our body, our ability to cope and adapt to stress and stressful situations. So when we get into a situation, when we are overwhelmed to the point where we really can't cope anymore, we're experiencing traumatic stress. So again, stress, normal, everyday stuff. Traumatic stress is when we start to get into this, I can't, I can't cope, I can't deal. And when we get to a point where I start talking about the brain and the different parts of the brain, I'll come back to what's actually happening in the system at that point. So it's important to note that the consequences of the exposure of whatever event or circumstance that is overwhelming 
our system can be external and it also can be internal. It can be both at the same time. Something can be happening outside of us that can flood our system, our brain and our nervous system with old familiar patterns, which again impact what the consequences of that event and circumstance, previous events and circumstances on our ability to cope or rather not cope or not be able to adapt to the situation. So when I'm saying traumatic stress, this is really what I'm talking about, is that we are going into a survival pattern and we are actually going to be operating from a different part of the brain. The next definition is types of trauma. So we're not necessarily identifying different experiences because that can be a multitude of things for different people, but specifically what I'm going to assume a lot of people out there were assuming when I said trauma, which is PTSD. PTSD stands for Post Traumatic Stress Disorder. This is something that psychologists, psychiatrists, therapists use as a diagnostic tool and criteria for someone who has experienced a either potentially or actual life-threatening event. So this is what a lot of people who come and see me assume all trauma is. Post-traumatic stress disorder, which is a continuation of symptoms over six months. So you can have acute stress disorder, which is under six months and kind of in transition of traumatic stress. PTSD is what people are usually thinking about when they think about trauma or what I call big T traumas right? So really bad car accidents or uh, if veterans come back from war and they're experiencing certain symptoms, a lot of the times it ends up being PTSD. In my experience as a trauma therapist, it's not necessarily for me to tell someone what is or isn't trauma. What I do experience a lot with people is that they're thinking if they don't meet the criteria for PTSD, that means that they have not indeed incurred trauma, which is false. So that's a big reason I'm doing this video is because you can incur traumatic stress because of a traumatic event and not end up having PTSD. You can have generalized anxiety. You could have a lot of other things going on, depression, um, and able to focus not being able to you know, stay connected, having disassociation. Those are all the different aspects that you can have because of traumatic stress and not necessarily have PTSD. So I think that's a really important piece of this. So now we're gonna break this down even more is there's something called developmental trauma and that is when we have had traumatic events, either one or many is typically the case, but when we've had some kind of traumatic event in the developmental stages of our brain. So fun fact that our brain, it starts developing in utero when we're inside of our mother's womb and continues brain development the brain is fully developed around 25, 26, depending on the person, the individual, and it processes or grows from the bottom up. So meaning that we start from the brain stem and those pathways and all of the billions of neurons that we have actually start to develop from the bottom of our brain. So again, trying to keep this as simple as I can. I don't know how to talk about trauma without at least introducing parts of the brain. And I will absolutely be doing that video right after this. So something that can develop out of developmental trauma, but it doesn't necessarily have to be connected to developmental trauma is something called complex PTSD. So complex post-traumatic stress disorder. 
it's where you have a layering of or a multitude of different traumatic experiences throughout your lifespan. And this isn't to say that if someone doesn't feel like they had developmental trauma that we were just speaking about, and maybe you get into your 20s or your 30s and that's your first incident of trauma and then reoccurring traumas happen after that, you can absolutely have complex PTSD. But if those things didn't happen until an adult, you wouldn't have developmental trauma. It would only be complex PTSD for whatever has occurred in your life at that time when these multitude of things were happening. So why that's important is because when you're talking with someone, how you deal with that, how you go about healing that, what parts of the brain are impacted is going to matter. So if you have developmental trauma, you can have developmental trauma and complex PTSD. Complex PTSD does not mean that you had developmental trauma. So <laughs> trying to make it as simple as possible and these things can be a little bit complex. So developmental trauma is that certain parts of our brain are going to get impacted if we've experienced certain things as children. Some people experience a lot of invalidation, discrediting their experiences from as a child and being made to feel like they're crazy or they were losing their mind as a kid. So developmental trauma can be quite serious. However, it continues throughout the lifespan. And until you can start to tie together those neural networks and understand why you're having some of the experiences you are as an adult, and that they may tie back to certain things that you experienced as a child when you didn't have the resources or you didn't have the capabilities to change that environment or change those circumstances, it's really going to be hard to change that pattern and response inside of your body and your brain. I think it is an important piece of realizing that we don't necessarily have to identify as a trauma survivor or a victim or someone who's been impacted negatively by a harmful action and at times we're still impacted by trauma experiences because maybe our parents were traumatized. The final piece is what we can also realize is that there are transgenerational trauma patterns, meaning things that are passed down along the way. And that can be biologically, but also environmentally. Transgenerational patterns, such as cooking food a certain way, or having certain kinds of traditions, those are transgenerational patterns, things that are passed down. So transgenerational trauma are trauma experiences that are also passed down historical trauma. So historical and cultural trauma are the things that have happened on a sociopolitical or larger scope to groups of people, such as genocide of entire cultures and peoples. There's one last piece that I'd like to mention. So something called adverse childhood experiences, the ACEs. They did studies years ago and started to look at the impact that adverse childhood experiences have across the board for functioning as an adult. That includes health and wellness issues. What came out of that is that we now understand that what I call small t traumas which can be kind of death by a thousand cuts, so to speak. Constant invalidation, constant gaslighting of children, you know, making them think that they don't really know what's going on because they're a child, can create just as much of an impact over time as one big T trauma. So those big T traumas that we associate with post-traumatic stress disorder Lots of little ones as we're growing up can also have the same impact on our system and our brain 
as one of those big traumas. I will put a link to the ACEs information down below. It's all really fascinating. They continue to do amazing research with this. If you are above the age of 18, you can check it out and get your ACEs score and see how that collaborates with certain things to be aware of. It's not cause and effect, but I think it's good to be aware of what those things can contribute to, but it's not the whole picture, right? It doesn't take into effect your resiliencies or other environments. So these are our definitions. And again, it's there's a lot there, but I'm really trying to just get us on the same page so that if I'm bringing these things up or I'm talking about trauma, there's at least a basis of understanding or a reference point to come back to. Covered a lot of logistical stuff today. <sighs> we made it through though. Hopefully you start to see why just saying trauma doesn't mean one thing and why we're all gonna experience it slightly differently because we're all wired differently. We've all had different experiences in our upbringing and our childhood, which have created more vulnerabilities or resiliencies. And we really have to take into account also our family origin, our ancestry, our cultural aspects to see what is all coming together to create the impacts of who we are in this moment. Today's goal was just a beginning. This is just the beginning of us setting a context so that I can go deeper into a lot of this stuff on this channel. Thank you for joining. Let me know if you have questions or comments and we are building a foundation of being trauma informed. So it's okay to just take it slow, take it in, and I will be doing a follow-up to this. So don't forget to subscribe if you're new and like, share with anyone that you feel would get benefit from this. And don't forget to watch the next video about the brain.